We met up with Simon from Whitestone Cheeses in Oamaru. He shared a little history of the company. We started cheese making here 25 years ago now. Uh, originally we were beef and uh, lamb farmers from um, just south of Oamaru. And in 1987, we decided to diversify to cheese making, which has uh, proved to be uh, challenging along the way, considering we didn't know a thing about making cheese at the start. And now we're 25 years into it and making just short of 25 cheeses. Uh, I think we've got 23 on our range at the moment, and we're adding to them uh, every, every year or so. So yeah, we've, we're based here in Omaru, um, buy all our milk locally uh, from specific farms. We have farm ID, we go right back to the farm ID for all our milk supply and we make uh, cow, sheep and goat milk cheeses. We've slowly built our range along the way. Now we cover a variety of cheeses from white moulds to blues to pressed cheeses and Windsor Blue is our, our flagship cheese, our most awarded cheese. Um, actually it's the most awarded cheese in New Zealand. We employ about 50 staff here on, uh, in Omaru and um, yeah, we're slowly, steadily growing. How do you keep the cheese taste and quality consistent? Is it all to do with the milk? The milk varies throughout the season. We have uh, winter milk supply, so we switch on to a solid uh, single farm supply during the winter. And then uh, in the summer, we have a select few farms that we get uh, supply from, but we keep an eye on the variation of our solid um, breakdown throughout the throughout the season and the, the skill of the cheesemaker is to adjust their make to adapt to those variations in milk solids but saying that some cheeses particularly white mold brie can bears, they are very seasonal because they are a reflection of the, the uh, seasonality of that milk at that time or even the the climate at that time of year if you're having a dry season or a wet season that comes through in the flavor of the cheeses how critical is the ageing process and how long do you need to age it to get the best result? Depends on the cheese variety. Semi-softs really are a year, around that period, six months. Um, we'll age some here for over a year before we release them. White mould cheeses, they are ready to go after 10 days, however we'd recommend at least another four weeks on top of that. It all comes down to personal preference, particularly if you've got your cheese at home and you want to bring it on, you can uh, bring it up to say 14 degrees and keep it uh, consistent temperature is the key. If you've got a wine chiller, we're finding a really good thing at home to whack your cheeses in there at 14 and it'll, it'll accelerate the ageing to how you like it. Um, some people might like a really ripe gooey brie and they like to smear that over crusty bread or others might be more into um, say a, a sharp cheddar and um, I think the, the longer you age them the more complex your flavours are going to be and another big thing is to always serve your cheeses at room temperature, bring them out a good hour before they're um, to be served and you've got a totally different experience. Talk me through the setup here at Whitestone. Yeah we've got a uh, cafe, factory shop, um, focused on cheese here, we um, serve coffee and uh, a muffin but aside from that we focus on on, on the presentation of cheese, um, our team here all ages our cheeses on site so they're all ripened, ready to go. So we offer a range of ripe uh, cheeses to, yeah, to serve the people coming in. Out the back we have uh, our factory, purpose built factory. We're making all our cheeses on site and uh, operating five days a week. So do the customers get something a little special when they come to the cheese shop? Oh, they sort sure can. They can, uh, they can either get a platter where they sit down and we, we can customise that platter to their uh, requirements, whether it's blue, they love their blues, we can send them a, uh, send them a variety of blue cheeses or white moulds or a mixture. We then do different cuts and different sizes of cheeses that aren't available elsewhere. So they come in here, if they're having a party, they can buy a whole round or they might be uh, going to stay with someone for a few weeks and they can get a whole um, selection to take away and, or even buy some ones that we've aged for a year or we might find some um, stock out the back that might be three or four years old and it's, yeah, like, wow, look what we found. So offer a whole um, variety here at the, at the factory door. What's the biggest hurdle in commercial cheese making? Probably compliance. Uh, we're finding it seems to be growing and growing every year. We just have to keep adapting and throwing more resources at it. Uh, and we are very conscious of food safety, and that area seems to be um, harder and, and harder. But in saying that, if you're keeping up with them and, and working alongside with them, the, the, the authorities are pretty good to deal with. Um, that and I mean, we've got a great milk supply here in North Otago. 
uh, I think our next constraint in terms of growth or, or hurdle will be the size of our plant and, and meeting demand. So we grow steadily to, to match the market and, and match our plant capacity. What is your recipe to success? Yeah, we like to, um, to keep it family. We, we treat all our team here as part of the family. Um, we're family owned and operated, so we think that's an important part of our, our culture is that we, we, we stick to those roots and we, we avoid being larger and corporate. Um, so yeah, no, we haven't heard from them yet, but yeah, we're happy with the way we are and we're, we're not trying to be a global dominant player. We're, we're just um, a, a business that enjoys what, what we do and we love our products.